How's it going, guys? Jacob Rothenberg here. And on the channel this week, we have Lindsay Allison with The Awakened Press. How are you doing, Lindsay? Hi, Jacob. It's so good to be here. I'm doing so well. How are you? Doing well. So we're actually alumni in a online coaching program. And I thought it'd be really cool to bring you onto the channel and uh, talk publishing. So uh, welcome. Thank you. I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we haven't talked much prior, but I thought this was an awesome idea. So um, I'll get right to it. Uh, what is the Awakened Press and uh, what's it all about in the publishing space? Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Awakened Press started in 2013 and we have a traditional publishing background Right now, we are a hybrid between traditional publishing and self-publishing. So we offer what works in the self-publishing area for authors, and then we bring in some of the traditional publishing aspects as well. And we specialize in nonfiction self-help and uh, select uh, growth, personal growth books for children. Okay. Cool. And, um, and for my audience, a uh, majority of them are either self-publishers who exclusively stick to self-publishing, or uh, we also have a lot of authors that have worked with traditional publishing houses and could have honestly maybe had better experiences. So, um, yeah, I'll cut right to the question. What would be the allure with partnering with the Awaken Press, if I'm someone that might be self-publishing currently in self-help and um, wanting to perhaps do better with self-help, why would I partner with the Awaken Press? Okay, I think for a couple different major reasons. Uh, the first being that after publishing, we do have that ongoing support for authors uh, it feels a bit like family when we're working together, uh, and it feels a bit like an agent as well. So I'm representing the author. It feels a bit like an agent where um, I help them get book signings. Um, we do a bit more of the traditional publishing aspects such as getting on the TV interviews um, like Forbes or CTV. Uh, things like that. Uh, so there's ongoing support like a traditional publisher would have after the book is published. And that I do for life because I love books. I care about the authors and I just really want everyone to succeed. Call it crazy, but it's a bit of a legacy thing. So I want to help everybody rise up. So wow, yeah. That's very cool. I mean, I'll be honest with the channel. I don't have immediate access to book signings or immediate access to Forbes and other outlets like that. So that's definitely a lot of firepower for someone that wants to like really take off in the self-help niche for books. Yeah, I think the other way, the other layer um, aside from the support is, and I just want to clarify that not everybody gets onto Forbes, not everybody gets onto CTV, but there are methods in place that work uh that i've done multiple times before and it really depends on the the author's niche so the second aspect i think to help nonfiction self-help authors uh succeed more is we really work with the content mm -hmm. with uh how we're offering how you're offering a transformation for the reader so we're really looking at the uh identifying your niche, right? So just really making sure that you're really targeting the right audience. Okay. So I see as that as being part of like the pre-production phase with just doing like demographic research, customer yes. research, even keyword research. That's definitely vital because how can you market a book if you don't know who to market to? Um, one thing I'd bring out there, guys, for those of you listening, and this is so common, with self-publishers as well. As people who do self-publishing, a lot, the majority of us actually start out doing our first book ever in the, in the self-help niche, just because intrinsically a lot of us want to help others. But when we publish, we find, oh gosh, there's a million other books, 
on this topic or, well, how do I compete against Tony Robbins in the self-help world? And if you don't have any direction on proper marketing or if you don't have expertise on how to compete against other titles, you're kind of dead in the water. So I can see why partnering with the Awakened Press would provide immense value as you do need expertise and marketing to really succeed in a difficult world like publishing. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. I think that uh, because of COVID, like we were talking about, a lot of the bookstores and stuff, you know, they've closed down right now. <laughs> so, so, but being able to have that avenue to the bookstores is also really important for authors, not just the access, but the, uh, like the footwork and the legwork that goes on with it um, during that ongoing support. So that's something that I like to do. And having a, it really helps when the author has a business structure already in place where they have a, you know, a large or a healthy, I'd say a healthy email list and, and these other aspects in place where once they roll out, uh, and they do publish, they actually have not only a target audience, but, you know, people to actually sell the book to. <laughs> Got it. So I would say perhaps your best fit, would it be someone that's just some random with no assets whatsoever, <laughs> like just some working professional? The best, I think the, the client avatar that would work best for you is not someone who's necessarily completely unexperienced with like um, their industry or brand. So it wouldn't be someone that's like um, just working nine to five and hiring a ghostwriter to put out a book. You really want to be the head of your brand um, with a venture like this and actually have substance in the existing field that you're publishing or writing for. Would that be accurate to say? Absolutely. This is exactly who we work with and get results for. Uh, people who have been uh, in their business for many years and it doesn't have to be many years actually it can be you know a few months but as long as they have that clientele and a proven method that helps others um, of course going with nonfiction self-help that theme if they have a business that helps others and the book is gonna help their their clients as well uh, so, yeah, the heads, the heads of their brands, um, pe people who feel very confident in what they're doing with their work. I know that uh, there's someone I work with now, just an example, doesn't have to be crazy a lot, like the credentials don't have to be high, but uh, in terms of long term, many years. But I mean, I have one person that I'm working with right now who does um, psychic readings uh, for people. Oh. And so she's, she's very much, she's very experienced um, in that niche. And so when the book comes out, she's already, ha she already has a bunch of people that are, you know, um, she's a good example. She already has a bunch of people that are ready for the book. And she already does readings uh, for a living, you know. Uh, and so whenever she goes to the mall to do her readings um, or, you know, any aspect of that, she has the book ready and they it, it's it's uh, more informative when they have questions so it's all about intuition you know how to use your intuition things like that so it's a good example um you don't have to be you know the ceo of <laughs> of whatever for 30 years you can just be an expert um for a few months as long as your concept works okay i really like something that you said in that you want to be able to leverage either potential readers or your clients, fans that'll either buy your book and or review your book so that you're not just on live release day publishing with no guaranteed sales, no reviews. And um, that would be detrimental. But um, so would it be fair to say you help um, professionals also in the marketing process with like developing an ARC team? and um, facilitating reviews uh, reviews and sales for day one of a launch. Yes, we plan the launch. We plan a pre-launch as well, if that's the case. 
and uh, there's different tiers of the marketing. Uh, and if the person, if the author wants to go really, really far, then there are packages in place where there's a full PR blueprint, you know, full marketing blueprint where you get into the traditional media um, as well. Uh, but it's, it's not always that. It doesn't have to be so big and so daunting. Um, you know, again, uh, taking the author for the intuition book that we, that we spoke about, uh, she's not going that route. And uh, we feel really good about this book for her because she knows exactly uh, who she's going to be, you know, giving the book to um, in terms of sales and everything. So, so all we had to do in that case was figure out a plan. So we just kind of looked at it months ahead and, and, and made things up that way. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. So I know everyone's definition of success is different. So you don't have to be a New York times bestseller to consider your book to be a success. And, um, I was going to ask this question, although I guess it's not as relevant, but maybe I should ask it anyway. Um, what are some accolades that your um, clients and authors have reached working with you? Have there been those have, that have been on bestseller lists? Have they reached um, certain achievements? I know everyone's mileage might vary, so you can't guarantee results, but what are some of the results that you've been able to achieve with clients? I love what you said, Jacob, about success. I, I love that so much. I, that's the first conversation we have when we talk just so I can get to know um, where the person is because if someone wants to quit their job and be a full-time author, that's very different, a different measure of success than simply having the book uh, there for their personal project or something, you know? Um, so I love that you said that. Um, so we've created uh, three or four bestsellers. I have to update the how to be a bestseller book on my website, so it shows you how to do that. Um, so three or four of those, I have to update that to that um, number. <laughs> so three to four number one bestsellers, but the success I think that the clients have really achieved is A, having their dream book actually existing in the 3D. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they've been waiting for years to have that out, whether it's an ebook or the, paperback or the hardcover. Um, they've been just waiting or they pitched to traditional, not that that's bad, but they pitched to traditional publishers for a while. And now they're like, I just want to go on my own because I know I can do it. So that, um, but also going further than that, the actual readership having people actually read and buy and read their books. Um, so, uh, you know, we think about long term, we think about generational. So whenever we publish a book, we, we don't think just about this generation uh, and how it's going to impact the present moment and the here and now. We think about, you know, what are your kids going to see like when they read this? And that's how we create the book. Um, so, uh, you know, we think in terms of sales really long term. So if they're not getting that number one, it's okay because you don't need to have number one to get uh, a successful book. It's really about the ongoing sales. So, it, you know, that's a thing as well. Yeah. Um, I think just in virtue of creating the book and having it come to life is a success. It's definitely a very arduous process and an achievement actually to go through the writing, everything involved and having it come to life. And um, something about success, I would say, is also linked to fulfillment. Okay. And honestly, my most fun moments in publishing was when I started out my first month ever self-publishing. I made 30 bucks. My second month ever, I made $200. But those I two first that. months were my, close, my, my most fun times uh, in the space because it's like, wow, I'm making this magical online money with self-publishing. And, and it's possible. It's actually possible to not just make money online, but for people to actually buy and read my work. It's like, whoa, that's a huge right? accomplishment. Yeah. And that makes it fun. So it really does. I love that you said that. Um, I love your first moment with that. 
Um, I think that also the best success, because success, as you said, varies between what the person wants, but the, the best success is, um, especially in the nonfiction self-help niche, which can include some poetry books as well, depending on how that's done, um, is the, their desire, the author's desire to help others through their work. So I think a really good example for that is one of the authors, Marley Liss, who I've worked with. I talk about her a lot because she just blows my mind with how amazing she is. <laughs> but she, when we first started working together in 2016, I had this vision of her, uh, you know, being on the news and uh, having the book as part of her movement. Um, and as long as we worked, so we continued to work together and really co-collaborate for three years, two or three years, um, and just kept on encouraging, you know, just kept on encouraging the author, like kept on encouraging her, kept the partnership, kept by her side, you know, through that whole thing. And now she has, it's called a re rehumanize, a rehumanized movement that's connected to the book. Um, she's helping young women, especially through sexual assault situations. Um, and so the book is connected to all the people that she's helping. So I think the number one success with the books that I'm, I've been working with um, has been the communities that they've wanted to impact uh, with the books. Yeah, I think, and I'm going to make a general blanket statement here on behalf of the self-publishing community. I think a lot of us honestly get too caught up on the business side of the whole bit of the industry and to where it's not just about making dollars and cents, but also actually providing breakthroughs for your customers and for your clients that you're serving with these books. I mean, yeah, obviously it's great to make money, but I think it's much infinitely more impactful to help others with um, the content that we're putting out. And that's where we're really delivering the value. And that's how you also sustain a business in something like a book brand where you have to deliver value in order to be successful long term. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. So um, I think you mentioned, I want to just get into a little bit of the technical. So with the pre-production side, what do you help with um, if I were a client? starting out with you? What are we looking at working together once I have my manuscript um, either written or I'm still in the process of plotting it out? So uh, that is really great. Um, basically, we can just start off with an idea. It doesn't have to be a complete full-fledged manuscript. I work with people from all stages. Uh, my, my background is editing and academics, <laughs> academic stuff. So uh, uh, all of that comes into play with the book production where it's content. We look at the content, we really work with the, how the reader is going to be transformed. We look at the, how to, where is your ideal audience? All that stuff goes into the book production. So it's really um, hardcore editing, <laughs> hardcore editing, um, and, but it's not ghostwriting. So, so, uh, I used to ghostwrite, uh, don't do that anymore. Um, but, uh, I just found that people weren't getting what, it, what they needed from that, um, from that process, or it wasn't coming across in the way that was, you know, designed to do. And it's really a lot of work. Like you really have to get into person's head to I do think that. People just weren't giving you the proper outlines for you to do your job. <laughs> That's you. what it really comes down to, to put in the craftsman. Thank you so much. I, I just really, so it's really been focusing on if the person just has an idea, if the writer just has an idea, then, then um, I will guide them through the writing process and I, and I help inspire them with the writing process to create the book. So uh, we have one on one, uh, very intimate, um, <laughs> not that intimate very intimate, uh, you know, Zoom calls or, or uh, story building techniques mm -hmm. and writing techniques and stuff that we do. Um, and it's all customized and tailored to the person at exactly what level, uh, exactly what level that, that they're at. 
Um, so, and then in terms of the publishing part, uh, what's actually happened is sometimes they go off to traditional publishers after they're done. Um, sometimes they decide that they want to go and pitch the book that way. Uh, so, but then sometimes they want to do what I've offered with the publishing and, uh, they, uh, and then we do that hybrid process where we do the self publishing. Um, I do the mechanics of that. So I set them all up, uh, my team and I set them all up with everything that they need, uh, the mechanics of self publishing, uh, so they can collect hundred percent of the royalties. Uh, and then, um, so I guide them through how that all works, all the mechanics of that, um, if they choose to publish that way. Um, and then, um, after that, uh, you know, if they do decide to publish that way, then they get that ongoing support and I act as kind of like their agent, um, in that way. But, but not everybody, you know, decides to publish. We can just focus on the actual book creation. And, and that's where my background is. And that's what's so fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think uh, this is a question that would come up from viewers and people listening. Do you have connections to like great cover designers, great freelancers in place? So that's all covered. Yes. Uh, lots of the, uh, a couple members of the team uh, are from the traditional publishing background. And uh that's all covered. So we don't have to do the full, I think sometimes I make it sound really big and really daunting. So I just want to come back down to earth a little bit. We don't have to do the full thing. It can be pieces of the publishing. It can be pieces of the book creation. So sometimes people just come and they already have their, their writing done and they just want an ebook. So we can design that. Um, I don't do the actual designing but uh, the team does that. Um, so everyone has their various jobs. Uh, it's kind of like a little, you know, boutique publishing house right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. And um, yeah, I think it just, I know it's really nerdy, but hey, we're in the publishing space. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun for everyone. Um, you really have your own agency going on and it's really cool to see that you're successful with it. Thank you. And I love nerdy. It's so exciting, you know? <laughs> Uh, I mean, you've been in business for uh, almost over seven years now, so it's good that you're, you're passionate about it and it's still exciting to you. I can see it with a smile on your face that it's still, um, you know, a passion of yours up until now. So very cool. Um, one thing that I want to ask out there is, like, do you have a free guide or a resource that someone can um, access if they want to learn more about either what the Awaken Press has to offer or some tips and pointers you can give it do you have like a landing page or website for that you're amazing thank you yes i have a, a guide right now that talks about uh there's a few points on there called how nonfiction books that work it's called nonfiction books that work and it's it's a it's pointers it's a very quick meaty ebook uh that i am offering for free to help the you know, the, the author at, or the budding or aspiring author. Uh, and it's filled with nonfiction self-help uh, publishing tips. So it's really a juicy little guide. <laughs> so, yeah. Very cool. And is it something that um, I can probably provide as a link in the YouTube description below on like a website? It seems like it may be a name and email. You can get the guide for free. Would that be fair? Yes, absolutely. And they can also email books at theawakenpress.com and I can email them the guide as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, awesome. So we'll get that Vanny page set up for anyone that wants to learn how to do nonfiction more properly. And um, for those of you listening out there, whether you're a self-publisher that's just trying to make money online or you're someone that's in the self-publishing space as a working professional, Look, I know it sounds pessimistic, but the honest truth is going out there alone can be very daunting and the odds of success are against you just doing it on your own without anything to leverage in terms of marketing expertise or even pre-production expertise. So it really helps to partner with someone, whether it's an agent or a coach or even just a consultant and get the right direction that you need so that your work will actually be read 
be acknowledged and be able to help people and deliver value. So that's what I have to say about it. Thank you so much, Jacob. I'm excited about what your company is doing as well. Yeah, we're in the, uh, right now, we most specialize in the romance publishing niche, uh, romance fiction. Um, but that's a whole other topic. I'm not here to sell, but um, yeah, we're doing well. And um, I, I think uh, things have been really hit off this well this year, despite COVID and everything. So uh, we're happy. So um, with that, is there anything else you want to say as parting? Anything else you want to conclude with? Uh, just a thank you and um, don't get discouraged if you're uh, wanting to be author, aspiring author or uh, an existing self-published author or you're thinking about self-publishing or going in general the publishing route. Don't get discouraged um, about your dream because the book will become real and there are options out there uh, to get your book to become real. So never give up on your dream of publishing and just, uh, you know, keep on, keep that idea alive. <laughs> keep keep yeah. that fire in your belly because like you said, it's not all about sales. Um, I mean, obviously we want people to read it, um, but sometimes it's just about making that accomplishment and the writing journey in itself. Absolutely. So, um, we'll have a link to your guide below and for those of you who uh, Want to learn more go to the awakenpress.com Likewise, Lindsay is also on Facebook where you can uh, I assume find her and get more information on her program and her company and Yeah, it was a great time speaking with you and I'll see you later. Thank you so much Jacob. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye